You know, one of the big trends going on in Hollywood, uh, besides TikToking yourself or <laughs> re releasing sex tapes or whatever, <laughs> one of the big trends in, in Hollywood today, especially amongst the upper echelon kind of directors, is blame all of your problems on comic book movies. <laughs> that's that's the new trend, mm -hmm. that, right? It's like, my movie didn't do well? Must be them comic book movies' faults. They're how exactly? I don't know how, but uh, it's the comic book movies' fault. <laughs> Monday, Roland Emmerich's damn Spider-Man No Way Home. <laughs> well, damn it. pretty much. Because the next guy to join his voice to the fray oh, no. is one Roland Emmerich. No. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. Eat shit. Oh my <laughs> Roland God. Emmerich, no one could have predicted sorry. that would Who's happen. come out to say, this is the headline over at CBR reading, ID4 creator uh, Roland Emmerich says Marvel, DC, and Star Wars films are ruining the movie industry. Sounds like Moonfall is ruining the movie industry. The guy who just made Moonfall is complaining about uh, Marvel, DC. Uh, th let's read here what's, what's going on here. Independence Day director Roland Emmerich recently claimed that the success of major franchises such as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the DCU, and Star Wars have ruined, the success has ruined the film industry. In an interview with Denna Geek, Emmerich commented that disaster movies have changed since the advent of large event films based on comic book properties. Reflecting on the state of the film industry, the director said, naturally, Marvel and DC Comics and Star Wars have pretty much taken over. It's ruining our industry a little bit because nobody does anything original anymore. <laughs> Emmerich has previously spoken about his disregard for blockbuster films, noting that he occasionally watched Marvel films to fall asleep on long distance flights. Wow. Now, this coming from the director of Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's keep going on. Emmerich continued on to say that his general ambivalence to superhero movies may be due to his German heritage, according because, you know, Germans don't like superpowers, apparently. Uh, it's heritage. According to the filmmaker, the idea of superheroes only took root in Germany well after he had grown out of the target audience. Okay, so he's saying that the, it's not that the German culture, because German culture loves superhero. You look at the box office results for, for comic book movies in Germany. But he's saying maybe it just didn't take root when he was a kid. Okay, look. You mean the idea of the Ubermensch wasn't something he was familiar with? Well, I mean, look, look, look that's not what he's talking about. What, what I'm saying is, The the no I I'm, I'm hearing a lot of people talk about, and look everybody's entitled to an opinion I, I get it but I've been hearing a lot of people placing the fault of their woes which is what human beings do yeah right half of America mm -hmm. well all of America every, everybody <laughs> wants to find a scapegoat for their problems yep it's it's it, it's it goes back to the, the long well, the history John we play Canada. I mean, Blaine Canada, <laughs> South Park does, right? But it's true. You go back to the beginning. Whenever we have a problem, we never take responsibility for our own problems. Mm -hmm. We as human beings, I'm guilty of it. Everybody in this room is guilty of it. All of you at home are guilty of this. We try to blame something else or somebody else. And what I've been seeing lately is a lot of people in Hollywood trying to point their fingers and blame their failures on the success of somebody else mm -hmm. or of something else. And what I have yet to hear from any of them, you want to say to me, comic book movies are ruining our industry. Then I will say to you, tell me how. How? How are people going? Because you know how many people were going back to the movie theaters before Spider-Man No Way Home came out? Less than half, Variety said. Less than half of the regular occasional casual moviegoer had started going back to the movies at all since the pandemic. That changed with Spider-Man No Way Home. You want to know why Scream was able to make $30 million? It's because people started going back to theaters because they were going back to see Spider-Man No Way Home. You want to know why some of these other films are like doing well and all that kind of stuff? It's because a lot of them started going back to the theaters because of Spider-Man No Way Home. Somebody else succeeding does not inhibit you from having success. And I'm sorry. Now listen, we've talked here before. We like a lot of Roland Emmerich films. Like there's a number of films. I'm a, I'm a fan. I mean, obviously he's got some real stinkers, but I'm a fan. I like Roland Emmerich. Hey guys, we want to take a second and thank the sponsor of today's episode, Stamps.com. Now you know Stamps.com. They've been supporting the John Campus Show for a while here. Now let's face it. Going to the post office is time consuming and really not the way you want to be spending your time. And that's why I highly recommend to do your mailing and shipping online with stamps.com. 
Stamps.com allows you to mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. It, you can send letters, ship packages, and you can pay a lot less with discounted rates from UPS, uh, USPS, and more. And you see, that's why Stamps.com is a must-have for any business. Whether you're a small office sending out invoices, an online seller shipping out your orders, whether you're somebody who's just trying to send things out to your friends and family, or if you're a giant warehouse, like sending out thousands of packages a day, stamps.com can handle all of it with absolute ease. And here's the best thing with stamps.com, you get up to 40% off of post office rates and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. And this is why stamps.com is an absolute no brainer. It saves you time. It saves you money. It's no wonder that nearly 1 million small businesses already use stamps.com. So stop wasting your time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with my promo code campia, just go up to that microphone up in the corner, click on that and enter my code Campia. You get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale, no long-term commitments or contracts needed. Again, just go to stamps.com, click on that microphone at the top and enter the promo code Campia stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. You want to ruin the movie industry? putting out movies and telling people to come to them and giving them a shit experience. That ruins the movie industry. Mm -hmm. Telling people, come to our movie theaters and have a good time. You're going to enjoy yourself. Bring your date, bring your kids, bring your family. We're going to have fun. And then people set aside their evening. They pay a babysitter maybe. They buy their movie tickets. They get their popcorn. They get their soda. They settle in for two hours and have crap thrown in their face. That ruins the movie industry. Somebody else enjoying success and bringing people into the movie theaters does not ruin the movie industry. It is a pathetic victim kind of mentality that says, oh, woe is me. Everybody would love my movies if it wasn't for that damn Batman. <laughs> Everybody would love my movies if it wasn't for that. And, and normally I wouldn't care that Roland Emmerich said this because it's like hey, somebody has an opinion or whatever. But Moonfall is opening this week, and he's already in advance pre-making excuses for the failure of his film. And come on, dude, you're a you can make some fun cinema, Roland. Mm -hmm. Don't I mean you can even make some fun non design His we've talked about before, Rob. His Shakespeare movie, Anonymous. Anonymous. I really like his Shakespeare movie. I thought it was really good and showed he had a big wide range and all that kind of stuff, and that's great. But this whole thing of blaming comic book movies or Star Wars movies or DC movies or whatever, blaming them for your failures is not the option. Instead, you should be groveling on your hands and freaking knees and saying, thank you, Mr. Feige. Thank you, Star Wars. Thank you, DC, for keeping the theaters going and mm -hmm. keeping people coming in. Because and anybody who's going to go employed. see this, what's that? Those movies keep thousands of people employed. Oh, yes, they yeah, do. hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands if you add them all together. Uh, yeah, you add all yeah. the uh, and again, worldwide. Somebody needs to explain to me how number one, bringing people into the movie theaters, and then number two, delivering a fun, entertaining experience that people enjoy. Tell me how that's bad for the movie that industry. That people want to watch again and again yeah. because it's not like these are movies that people are going and seeing one time and going, okay, I saw it. I'm, you know, check that off the box. Yeah, some are, yeah. but a lot of these people are going back again and again and bringing mm -hmm. additional people, people that may not have felt comfortable going to the theater, but going, okay, I'll give it a shot because you loved this movie and you had such a great time. I'll give it a shot. You know, and not only that, but also, you know what also hurts our entire industry? When people who are part of it show that there is such a division within it, yeah. you know, like, why can't we all celebrate? There's certain, you know what? I will never watch the movie Arachnophobia. You all know why. <laughs> but I'm not saying that the move that movies like Arachnophobia should never be made because there are a lot of people that want to go see them. And I go, hey, good for you. I'm not going to go see it. However, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a right to be made. Why? Because, you know, I can have some, you know, thoughts on this show that sometimes make me come off as a twat because I am. And that's OK. But for the most part, I love this industry and I want to celebrate all the success of everyone. And so I'm like, Roland, what are you doing? We have enough divisiveness in the world when we turn on the news and we go to work and we see divisiveness everywhere we go. We shouldn't have to see divisiveness 
in the place that we go to escape and find joy. You know, why can't you just be thrilled that someone else is doing well? It doesn't take away anything from you at all. And but can I just point out too, the only difference between Moonfall and Justice League or Avengers is that the three people who raced off to save the world from a calamity didn't happen to have superpowers. Mm -hmm. Roland Emmerich just basically made his wannabe. Moonfall is a wannabe superhero movie. <laughs> it's a giant spectacle, whatever, heroes racing to save the world. The moons are going to crash into the thing. That's basically it. They just can't shoot lasers out of their eyes. That's the only difference. Well, also, you know, here's the thing about movies are a symptom. They're a reflection of our current state of civilization. Mm -hmm. And the fact that our civilization right now is looking for escapist entertainment is no different than any other time in Hollywood history. And if you think about the movies, like Monica Vitti was a hero of mine. She passed away at 90. But the movies that she was in in the 60s, nobody would watch today. I mean, I watch them. And I'm not saying people wouldn't watch them, but they're never going to burn up the charts. They're never going to have the cultural impact that they had at the time because our world is different. Mm -hmm. You know, spectacle and escapist entertainment is something that, especially when it's reliable, let's, let us not forget that the characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe are people that we grew to care about because they were well-performed, they were well-directed, they were well-conceived of, they were well-designed, and they were in movies that people really liked. And it represents the pinnacle of Hollywood filmmaking. So what is the problem? You know, you're giving people, to say that it's not cinema is untrue. You're giving people great characters and great stories mm -hmm. that are mythic in nature, that go back to the very beginning of storytelling, whether you're talking about the ancient Greeks or Gilgamesh or whatever. Uh, it might not be Shakespeare, but in a way, there is a little Shakespearean drama mm -hmm. in Captain America, Winter Soldier, or Civil War, or Endgame. I mean, Thanos is a rather Shakespearean character. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. By the way, isn't there something true, kind of insensitive? You got a movie Moonfall coming out starring Catwoman and King Orm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you show some you're respect. Holly Berry's like, hi, <laughs> um, excuse me. And yeah. Yeah, and you're shitting on their. I, I, yeah. Chris, you hear, like, I, I don't know. What do you make of what Roland's saying? I don't understand the language being used because to, to talk about how the blockbuster is the issue. What is Independence Day? Right. Yeah. <laughs> what, Roland, do you know what movies you make? <laughs> Have you seen it? I watch that movie every 4th of July, and I do the whole speech. That's what I call a close encounter. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you poo-poo on the, the same kind of film genre, essentially, that's really given you your platform? Mm -hmm. And also, why would you say stuff before your movie's even released? Because if you don't believe in your film, who else is going to? No one's ever going to believe in your career as much as you do. By the way, he raised that money with China financing, financing yeah. all around the world. Mm -hmm. He raised $138 million, I think he said. That's what the movie cost or something like that. Somewhere around there. I, I saw an interview, which means it's an indie <laughs> film, indie movie, and that's what he gave us. He could have made any movie he wanted. Any independently financed film, he got the Chinese to give him a lot of money to make Moonfall. He made his bed. You'll uh, sleep in it. And so all of us, soundly, <laughs> after the moon falls. The this question weekend. is for you. What do you think about these comments? Listen, we we are not Roland Emmerich haters around here. If you've been watching our show, you, we like I'm Roland an Emmerich. I'm easy lay for Roland Emmerich. I mean, absolutely. Uh, but, I mean, this is pretty ridiculous things to say about your owners. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you make of these comments? Jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.